Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where we are going to show you how to model structural members in RAM elements. In this video, we are going to be focusing on modeling linear members through the graphical user interface. Member elements such as beams and columns can be assigned in the data panel under the Members tab in the Nodes and Description icon. Similar to the generation of nodes, members are created in RAM elements by manually indicating the nodes in the data ribbon or by using the member generation tools located in the spreadsheet tab of the ribbon. Now before we begin modeling the members in RAM elements, let's first take a look at some of the fields we have available to us in the data panel. The first two sets of fields are the NJ and NK fields. These are the initial and final nodes of the member. The vector between NJ and NK defines the local axis of the member. Note that for physical members, it is necessary to define the star and end nodes of the physical member. Any intermediate nodes will automatically be added to the finite element model by the program. Next to that, you have your tributary width. This parameter is used to calculate tributary loads due to the pressure in the Y direction. This option is used mainly for joists intermediate beams. Pressure forces acting in other directions on the member must be applied directly by the engineer. Next, we find the brace field. This flag is used to determine if the member will be treated as a brace for the design of connections. In this way, the program will be able to differentiate sloped beams with braces. It has no influence in the analysis and design of the members. And the last field we have is the cantilever flag. This flag is used to determine if the deflection calculation of the member uses a cantilever method. This method considers that the maximum deflection is at the member end, otherwise uses a method that considers the maximum deflection in the member span. The first tool we're going to utilize is the connect nodes with members command. This will be used to create a member between sequentially selected nodes. Now this tool, like many of the others, will require you to select the nodes in a particular order. So the first thing we do is we unselect all nodes. You can simply do by just clicking anywhere in the display area. Then holding down your shift key, you're going to select the nodes you want in the order that you want to connect them. We can kind of think of this as a connect the dots. The order that they're selected is the path that the members are going to take. Once you select all of the nodes, you're going to say collect, connect nodes with members, and then we're going to collect it. Now, as previously stated, in RAM elements, you are allowed to model physical members, which means that a member can bypass a node and it'll still be connected to that node when the analysis is performed. Now, we're going to repeat this process two more times. We need to unselect everything and then we're going to draw a member between these two nodes, again selecting them in a particular order. And then again. Next you're going to learn how to segment a member in RAM elements. The first step to using this command is to select the members you want to segment first. Once they are selected we can go up to this segment members tool and we can find that we have several different tools to either segment or merge members with options of where you want to segment them and whether or not you want to segment the members and add an additional node. For this model we're going to go ahead and say create nodes and segment the member. Now here we're going to tell the program how many members we want to create from each. So we're going to go ahead and say three segments per member. We're going to tell it to segment the members, which will actually divide the members. If we selected the other option, it would maintain the original physical member, but just add some additional nodes along it. After entering your options, you can go ahead and click OK. And now you can see that each of these members were segmented and nodes were added. Let's go ahead and repeat this process by selecting this member. We're going to go back up to the segmentation tool and we'll go ahead and say create nodes and segment a member. 
and this time we're going to divide it into six evenly spaced members. Finally, we're also going to segment this floor member down here. We're going to select it first. We're going to go up to the segmentation icon and then click on the Create Nodes and Segment Member. Now this time we're going to divide it in five even segments, but we're going to create the nodes only and maintain the initial physical member that goes from column to column. Once we're done, we'll go ahead and click OK. We can see that new nodes have been created, but the full physical member is still intact. The next command we're going to use is to use the alternatively connect nodes with members command. This will create members between sequential pairs of selected nodes. The first thing we need to do is select our nodes in a particular order. So we're going to think of this as defining our first member. Our first member is going to be running between this node and this node. Our next number, member is going to be running between this node and this node. And then finally, our last member is going to be running between this node and this node. Then we're going to go up to the Spreadsheet tab in our ribbon and select the Connect Selected Nodes alternate, alternately with members. And you can see it selects the pairs of nodes. Let's repeat this process to model the vertical members. We need to unselect everything hold down our shift key and then select our first pair of nodes, then our second pair of nodes, and finally our third pair of nodes. Again, we're going to go and say connect selected nodes alternately with members. Next, we are going to learn how to mirror model geometry. The first step in this workflow is to select our members that we want to mirror. Now if I hold down my control key and draw a fence through the members I want to mirror first. Then I'm going to go up to the ribbon, select the Home tab, and I'm again going to use this Copy option. Now within the Copy Elements dialog, you're going to notice that I also have a Mirror command. We'll go ahead and select the mirror, and then what we need to do is pick a point in the plane. So we're going to go ahead and say x equals 12 feet. That's basically the midpoint of that top truss. Then we're going to select an axis to go around. And we're going to select the i-axis, which is the normal vector component of the mirror plane in the x direction. So we're going to enter 1 there. Number of copies will be 1. And then we'll go ahead and click OK. And you can see that we created our mirrored geometry. We will now use that same command to copy model geometry. First, we're going to select the entire model that we want to copy. And then we're going to go up to the Home tab in the ribbon and select the Copy icon. This time, we're going to go ahead and make a regular copy. We can enter the number of copies we want to make. We'll make two copies. And need to enter the distance between the copies. And we're going to go 18 feet in the Z direction. Once we're done, we can go ahead and click OK. And now we've basically repeated this entire frame to additional bays. So if we wanted to see that model in an isometric view, we can just right click in the display area and then select one of the isometric view options. Next, we are going to generate members in one of the global axis directions. Using this command, we can generate members starting for the selected nodes and ending at the last node in the specified direction. If there are several nodes in the chosen direction, the members will be defined between the selected nodes and the last node found in that direction. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and hold down our Shift key and select all the nodes we want to generate members from. We're going to select all of the nodes at the floor level. And then we're going to select all of the nodes for the central truss at the roof line. Once you have all of your nodes selected, you're going to go up to the Spreadsheet tab of the ribbon. And then we're going to pick the Generate Members from Selected Nodes icon. Here we can generate them in any of the global axis direction. We'll start in the positive Z direction. And we can see that nodes are automatically generated. 
Now this command does require you to have nodes at the starting and ending end of the member. We're also, with these nodes still selected, going to generate these members in the negative Z direction as well to finish off our three-dimensional frame. The last command we're going to use today is the enter diagonals commands. Using these commands, you can generate chevron braces or X braces automatically between a set of selected nodes. To make this process easier, let's go ahead and take a view of the elevation in the positive X direction. I'm going to right click on my display area and view the model from the top using the front X, Z option. This will allow me to see a plan view of the structure. Now I'm going to select the members in the frame towards the positive global X axis direction. Using my selection tools, I am now going to hide my unselected elements so I can view just this frame. Now to finish this off, I'm going to view an elevation of this frame, so I'm going to right click again. And then I'm going to select a front YZ view. This will make it a little easier to model the braces in this elevation. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to unselect the entire model, and then I want to select the nodes in a particular order. What I'm trying to model is an X brace in this bay and an X brace in this bay. What I first need to do is select all of the left hand nodes in the order from bottom to top to use this command. So again, I'm going to hold down my shift key and select my first node, my second node, and my third node to define the left hand side of these X braces. Still with my shift key selected, I'm going to then select the right side of these X braces. Then up in my active spreadsheet tools in the spreadsheet tab of my ribbon, I'm going to find all of my enter diagonal tools. And I'm going to go ahead and select the X brace connected. This will automatically generate an X brace with a central node located in it. Now, if I want to view the rest of my structure again, I can go ahead and say hide unselected objects, and I can go back to an isometric view as I was reviewing before. Now, to complete our sample model, we're going to use several of the tools that we already used previously in this exercise to finish off this model. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.